Developing story U.S. credit rating has been stripped by agency S&P. Now, Standard & Poor has lowered U.S. credit rating from AAA to AA+. U.S. earlier had the AAA rating, which is the highest in the world. It is, of course, a big blow to the Obama administration, as it is the first instance of a debt downgrade in U.S. history since 1917. The rating also reflects U.S. borrowers' ability to pay back loans. What it reflects is that the S&P does not have much faith in U.S. Congress and the U.S. Congress's plans to reduce the deficit, the mounting deficit of the United States. S&P had advised mainly that the U.S. Congress should try and make a plan to cut deficit by at least four trillion U.S. dollars over the next decade. Instead, they came up a plan with a plan earlier this week to cut the deficit by only about 2.1 to 2.4 trillion dollars. And this, according to S&P, is really not enough to put uh, enough faith in the U.S. system. And certainly it is a blow to the Obama administration who had warned that such a downgrade would occur if the uh, Democrats and Republicans were unable to reach larger cuts in spending. Uh, certainly, this is going to have a more immediate impact also on the U.S. economy in terms of interest rates going up. And what that essentially means is that the cost of business would go up, which is uh, a, a very difficult situation, especially for the United States now, given that it's just beginning to come out of the 2009 recession. Crazy day. Uh, we had a Fairly good jobs number, not great, but that was enough to move the market up 150 points on the opening. And then there were rumors that S&P is going to downgrade the market after the close, unsubstantiated, but enough to move the market down 240 points. And then there was a, another news out of the ECB that they were going to give Spain and Italy money, move the market back up 120 points. We've had a 600 point up and down rally today in volatility. I expect this volatility to last until we start to get some more clarity in, uh, in the markets, the global markets, right? So we need more clarity on the European situation, absolutely. We need to know that they, that they have, once again, they are, they, are, they are dealing with that issue and they are dealing with it in a realistic way. We need more clarity on what's going on here in Washington, D.C. Yes, we have a debt deal. Yes, the market doesn't really like the debt deal. And yes, we've got, you know, a half a dozen or a dozen congressmen that are trying to put together, you know, the next package of cuts by November. So until that happens, you're going to continue to have this volatility. There are real problems and issues. You know, people in the stock market are talking about, oh, well, this is a revaluation. Well, yeah, it's a revaluation. It's a revaluation lower. And why do you revalue 500 points in one day? What, what were we in denial about? And I think that it has been uh, a lack of recognizing how weak the economy had become, which is why this is a very significant employment report, because it tells you that maybe some of the pessimism was exaggerated pessimism. Maybe it wasn't you know, pessimists who were realists. Maybe these were things that we shouldn't be so worried about. But one month can't possibly put that aside. We still have to worry about next month. Uh, the summer numbers, the July and August numbers, aren't always that representative of where the economy is. Uh, the housing market still hasn't been fixed. That's a big problem. It's hard to turn the economy around without turning housing around. Uh, so there, there's still a lot of question marks.